Welcome to Fearlessly Transform Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Zoesha Elware. Are you tired of being knocked down? Are you tired of being against the ropes? Are you tired of being the devil's floor man? Well, my brothers and my sisters, it is time to fight. Fight with the word of God that we may be fearlessly transformed because it is time to fight. Good morning. Good morning. Fearlessly Transform. How are you guys doing on this great day? Uh, It's been a blessed one for me. So I'm so excited today to talk about what we're going to talk about. I know you saw the title of Ultimate Race. So we got to put our minds in in, in the mindset of running a race. And for those who's never ran track or never did anything, you kind of got to get yourself... (laughs) you know, intertwine with that so that you can definitely be ready for the race. So before I get really started with that, I want to give you a few things, other things that you uh, may not be mindful of. And that is, is that we actually opened our own uh, www.fearlessfirenetwork. And in that network, it is full of so many things. Completely open for you (laughs) to join us. Um, If you are a Christian and you just want to have an environment to grow, it's definitely the place to grow. Uh, Definitely a place to allow yourself to learn your gifts and just to have a transformed moment. So it's Fearless, Fearless Fire Network where we practice to have the fire daily. So if you haven't came over and joined us, make sure you do. Again, it's www.fearlessfire.org. Okay, now that we got that over with, let's get right to this lesson, the ultimate race. Are you ready to run this race? Are you ready? On your mark, get set, as they say in racing. Are you ready? We're not talking about just a practical race of that runners run, but we're talking about a spiritual race that we must be mindful for. You hear that little rattling? That's just me getting my Bible, getting my notes together so I can make sure that I give y'all this lesson in the manner in which God gives it to me so that we can go forward. So for anybody that's running, I'm becoming out of several different books. So if you like me and a student of the word and you want to write some of these scriptures down, make sure you get your pen and your paper. Amen. Because I'm sure that the Lord is going to give you something to blow your mind. So let us get started. And before we get started, let us pray and usher in God's presence. Dear Heavenly Father, our Lord and our Savior, our King and ruler over everything, our source. Hey, God, we pray for you right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That, God, you will come rest, rule, and abide and open our hearts, open our minds, open our understanding, God. We ask right now, God, that you release, oh, God, those that you give charge over us, oh, God, to carry out your will and carry out your way as we are, te- as I am teaching and preaching, God. I ask you, oh, God, to anoint me, oh, God. Let my words be edifying unto your people. Let it comfort, oh, God, and bring also Oh God, it, 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 direction as you see for it, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for your presence, oh God, that's going to dwell in this from the beginning to the end. We thank you, oh God, even for the healing and deliverance, oh God, virtue that's going to flow through this thing at the sound of my voice, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that the attentiveness that you're going to bring to people as they listen to your word. In Jesus' holy name, amen and amen. So the first thing you think you think about the ultimate race, I'm talking about the race of your life. And a lot of us don't really look at our lives as a race because we're only here for a little while. You know, um, we're not here for a long period of time. We, we It seems like we are because the days are long. But I'm going to tell you, just think about for how long it, it felt, how quick it went for your childhood. That's how even much more quicker it kind of goes for your adulthood. So we really got to start being strategic about our lives 
and not just our regular life, but our spiritual life so that we can do the ultimate race and conquer the things that God has asked us to conquer so we can strive for the ultimate prize. Now, when I say this, like, what am I talking about? I'm talking about you, your life, striving the prize. What did God tell you to do and how has he told you to do it? What is it that God promised you? Many of us are giving up on these things. Many of us don't even have no idea that those things even exist because we have spent so much time just trying to live according to the standard that people set before us that we have missed the mark in the liberty that Paul told us that we should have in God's word. Now, when I say that, I'm not talking about us abusing God's word, but I'm talking about we are so constricted. Everybody want to say you do this, A, B, and C, and you, you get in. Everybody want to say, do we go this way, do this way, this way, this is the way. My way is the way. No, over here, my way is the way. No, over here, my way is the way. The last time I looked, the Lord says that he was the truth, the way, and the light. That's the last time I heard. So instead of all of us saying that we are, why don't we say Jesus is? Hey, why don't we start leading people to run the race that Christ ran? Why don't we start pointing people that way instead of using our lives as the lives of the mark? Because we are not. God, to Jesus, when he was on this earth, he said, who did I call good? There will only be no one good but the Father. So if he said that, why are we saying that our lives are good enough to be used as a marker? And I call it a marker because we're talking about racing, a marker for another to begin their race. My life is not a depiction of what God wants you to do. My life is nothing to <laughs> what God wants you to do. Matter of fact, the only reason why I'm able here to preach and teach your word is because the sovereignty of God and the mercies that he has had on me. And all I'm here to do is to be your vessel to teach you God's word so that you will look to him for all things and that you will learn how to dwell in him and not our flesh or people. And we are so we're we're so caught up in racing amongst each other. We are not supposed to race against each other. We should be racing with each other. We should be passing the top, but time along each other so that we can all make it. But we don't do that. It's such a competition. It's such a me, 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 me kind of thing. And God is tired of it. Tired of it. Last week on Friday, I had a power hour. We do this in my ministry. If you look it up, look up my name, Dr. Zosia. We have power hours every other Friday, and it's a time of prayer, deliverance, and healing. And God has done miraculous things. Last week, I did some miraculous things with a person's leg and just breaking people free. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss that. But more so, that reminds me of why we need God. Because I can see something you can't see. And if I can see something on your life you can't see instead of cursing you, I can bless you so you can come out of it. If I see the gifts and that God is using you, I can go sit down and let him use you but cover you. But we don't do that. Oh, she doing it, let me do it. I can do it better than her. And so the enemy comes in and then we lose the race that we're even supposed to be running because instead of us running our own race, we're trying to run one that's not depicted for us. And we move, we lose our spot. Because now we have stolen the glory from God and taken it for ourselves. I know I'm very peculiar. I know I'm different. I know my ministry is different because I teach Jesus, 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 not just to live according to the word, hallelujah, but your life should be a reflection, a constant reflection of him. Because it was his life that brought me into Christ. It wasn't somebody else's. I've seen many of people live in Christ. I heard them preaching Jesus, but their lives didn't make, did not line up. Because they taught one thing to the body, but they're in their household it was another. So you cannot, if you can't balance out your own household, come and preach to another and tell them what they're supposed to do. Without calling them, that's what happened to Eli. In the, Eli the prophet, if you if you study it, and Samuel, that's what happened to him when God was raising uh, Samuel up to be a prophet. God used him at a young age, an infant stage, to tell Samuel what was going to be his judgment because he had not corrected his children and it had was come, becoming an affliction against God. God don't leave us no room for nothing. He always gives us opportunity, but when we refuse to change, we lose the race. Let's, so let's talk about this striving for the prize. 
1 Corinthians 9 and 24 say, Now ye know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain. That you may obtain. So why do we act like in this earth we've already received? God can use you. Listen, we know this. We read about this in the Bible, in the New Testament, in there several places, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, where the people said, Lord, Lord, did not cast out demons in your name. Did not heal the sick in your name. Did not do it. He said, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Depart from me. Depart from me. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Who wants to hear that? But many are going to hear that. Because we're doing what? We are not doing it the way God tells us to do it. He, God, so that's why God is going to tell many of us that he didn't know us. He's going to tell many of us, just like he was telling them in Matthew, about the tree and the fruit. If you go to Matthew 7 and 23, he was telling them about the fruit that does not produce good fruit. And he told them. Then he said what? He said, yeah, many will say to me today, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I would tell them plainly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of lawlessness. Okay? Depending on what version you read, and that's, that's the NIV. Let's go down here to the Amplify of it, and I love this. Let me see if I can find it real quick, because I always like to compare everything to the Amplify, because it gives you a whole depiction. It says, and then I would declare to them publicly. He's going to tell them out loud. You did your works publicly, right? You ca you prophesied, you cast out demons publicly. He said this, listen, listen, what he said. Then, then I would declare to them publicly, I never knew you depart from me. You are banished. From my presence, you who act wickedly, disregarding my commands. So we have gifts. We have gifts. And guess what? Our gifts work without repentance. Yes, they do. Romans 11 and 29 tell us that. So some gifts God put in you are going to work, but your gift is not a depiction that you have arrived. Your gift is not a depiction that you're found in the faith. God just told us in Matthew 7 and 23. You do not want to be one that he tells you to depart from him. We want to be what? Striving for the prize. We want all portions of our life to line up. We don't want anything in our life not to be as if what God said. We just don't. Because if we if we find ourselves in this state of what he what he was saying in Matthew 7 and 23, many are gonna suffer. Many are gonna be upset. Many are gonna be like, what? What are you talking about? You can read about this same thing in Luke. That's why I said the gospels. Luke 13 and 25, it said, after the master of the house gets up and shuts the door, you will stand outside knocking and saying, Lord, open. The door for us, but he will reply, I do not know where you are from. God has the door wide open right now. He's letting us come in. He's allowing us to get access. But we got to run a certain way, race striving for his prize and not for our own. Not for somebody can give you a pat on the back and say, ooh, that was you. Not for somebody to say, ooh, you're flowing like me. That's pride. That's not for somebody who, 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 oh, my goodness, I can't believe God used you for that. God will use anybody to heal, deliver, and set free if they will submit and bow down. But many of us don't. We don't run that race to receive the prize. We run the race because we think we are the prize. We think we are the truth. We the prize. Uh -huh, da, 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 I got my gold trophy and star. I'm it. I'm it. I'm it. That's how we walk. We act like there's no savior who died for us. We act like we died for everybody else. There was only one. We got to let him stay on the cross. And we got, by the way, you got to get up on there. Get up on that cross. And submit to him and run your race. Let's go to Galatians 2 and 2. Y'all know I'm all about Bible. I want y'all to get this word. 
in y'all. This is why I run the way I run. This is why I walk in the stay I walk. The enemy is always trying to get me to come up in pride and act like I'm some special. I am special in the eyes of God, but I understand who my creator is. I understand who called me. I understand who has given me the gifts. Yeah, I could go get the talents. He told us about those who go get the talents. Yeah, I know all that. But I also know what it means to be found, not found in the faith for disobedience. And I don't ever want to be in that place again. I don't want to be disqualified out the race because I didn't do what I was supposed to do. When they said on your mark, said go, I scratched the line. Or I'm pushing each other instead of staying in my lane. Or better yet, I'm taking enhancements. <laughs> Jesus. So that I can outrun other races, but it's false. It's built on a falsehood. So to the man, it looks like I'm winning, but it's built on falsehoods. No, I don't want to do that. So Galatians 2 and 2 says this. It says, and I went up from revelations and communicated unto them that gospel, which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them, which were of reputation, lest by any means to run or had run in vain. We don't do that. That's another thing. We're striving for the past. What are we saying? He's saying that he ran preaching and teaching. He teaches and preaches in such a manner that he does, he lives above reproach. Even to those who are already running, he ain't blasting them all out of front of what they're not doing. Instead, he's taking them in private so that they can understand what it is that they're missing so that God can continually use them. We don't do that. God told me that a long time ago. If I prophesied to the house and he showed me something that's out of order for the leader, I would tell the leader I need to have a conversation, but I don't dare do that in front of his people. But nowadays, because we think we want to show ourselves to be mightier than the house in which we serve, when we already know that God already set order with the gifts, and if you're in somebody else's house, you don't rule over them. That's the same way with people coming into your house, and you're a minister or a leader in the house, and they come and try to rule your house. That's why it behooves us if you don't, if you're in somebody's house, and they're not going according to God's word and not doing, listen, depart from them. Because you got to get your oil ready. You running the way. See, Tom already told you you're going to be five wives and five foolish. You're going to stay among the foolish? Come on now. But this is talking about revelation and understanding the way we communicate and what we do when we run in our race. Because my, a lot of us don't have no humility or compassion or kindness to one another. We don't, even though the Lord told us in Isaiah that with love and kindness have he drawn all men unto him. But we don't operate out of that. Instead, we operate out of control, manipulation, and then we say it's the gifts. Well, God came, showed it to me, but what did he tell you to tell it? You've been trained. You know how God operates. It's many of the things that we have done, but he said he threw it in the sea of forgiveness. Did he show it to you to blast the person or did he show it to you to have mercy and compassion on them and pray for them that that thing would be broken off? Come on now. Who do we think we are? Who do we think that we think we supersede? Let's go to another one. Hindrance. To the runner, Galatians 5 and 7. These are things that hinder us while we're running. You know, you ain't taking your vitamins. You ain't prepared for the race. You, you're supposed to be running the race. You have no endurance because you ain't prepared. Galatians 5 and 7 said this. Ye do not run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Eat, look, that's like it unto what I just told you. Take you. That's right. Practicing running your race. Practicing uh, uh, going out and making sure you can do your sprints and come back. Building up an everlasting endurance. It takes time for a race, for a person to run a race. It's not instant. And if you ain't ran in a long time, I dare you to get out there and run. You're going to have a charlie horse. You're going to pull something. You're going to fall down and put up some muscle broke or, or meniscus torn or something. Because you ain't exercised that muscle. And that's how a lot of us are. We haven't even done something or, or been in the practice of it for so long that when we start to do it then, we almost like, oh, we got this thing. No, you got to go before the Lord to make sure you're doing it right. 
And is that the way he have you to do it? That's why David asked God all the time. He always asked the Lord the how to. That's why God called him a man after his own heart. It wasn't because a lot of people bring up that David's infidelity, but David had issues, but he was repentant and he stayed before the Father's face because he knew that without God, he could not make it. That's all God trying to tell us to do in this race. It's to press towards the goal with him. Press towards the mark with him. Press towards the thing that he called us to us with him. Philippians 3 and 14 said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The high calling. What are you pressing for? Are you pressing for yourself? Are you pressing for somebody else you're trying to influence? Are you pressing because you're trying to show your mother, father, or whoever it is that you, that you have saw that you can do what they do? Or are you pressing towards the mark for God so that you can pass the test? You can run the race the way God called you to run it. Sometimes he wants you to sprint. Sometimes it's a long run. Yeah, yeah, about who shot God. Yeah, yeah, about. And you got you to gotta have endurance to run that long run. Sometimes it's two or three years before God, you can conquer that devil that's trying to destroy your life. But if you ain't putting no effort in and prayer and fasting in time, there's no endurance built up. As soon as that devil gets to attacking you, you're going to lay down. As soon as he brings, brings any difficulty, you're going to start giving up. As soon as somebody else afflicts something on you, because that's another major door, how most of us get opened up. Somebody else do something to us. We don't have any self-control. The enemy can just come in and do whatever he want to do. Come on. Who are we, who are we striving for? Who are we pressing toward the mark for? We're pressing towards it for Jesus Christ, our Father. Hallelujah, in heaven. With our, our, our God who died, who sit in the he heavenly places for us so that we can what, have this opportunity. What kind of press are you doing? Are you pressing to impress? <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Are you pressing to impress? You know what I'm talking about? Pressing your clothes, got your hair all slick, everything looking good on the outside, but nasty in the inside. Because you are not conditioned. You're not striving towards God prize. You're striving towards the prize that you have in your eyes. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. You're striving towards the things that you want instead of what God says that he will provide for you anyway if you are smooth to him. Almost everything that God has told me that he was going to do, he has done it. Not in my own might. It may sometimes it took years. But it happened because I did what I was about his business. So he was about mine and I wasn't about to, oh God, I'm doing this for this. Tip for tap, God, I'll wait for you. No. Yes, I was constantly putting in front what his words said and what he promised. But while I'm doing that, I'm making sure that I'm found in the faith. I'm making sure I'm doing it decent order. I'm making sure I'm walking in the flesh that I not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's Galatians 5 and 16 tell us. Because that's what take us out of the race. Because instead of you drinking your water, getting your electrolytes and building endurance and eating healthy, you want junk food. You want the quick fix. You want the easy button. Instead of an endurance button that will change your life. Instead of the everlasting button that will put you in a place with your Lord and Savior that will change everything it is that you think and know about yourself. For we serve a God that wants to please, look, want to do things for us that we can never imagine. We serve a God that wants us to run a, ra a race. That when he passed the baton to us, we're ready. Many are called to come forward, but they're not even ready. And I can say this because God gave me this word when he was speaking through me through the power hour. He said, now what the people are going to do, what the next generation going to do, that I'm pulling forward, that underdog, those who were rejected, those who overlooked, I'm pulling them forward. Now what, they're gonna, what are they going to do? You was complaining that you was in back. Now I done put you in the front. What you going to do? Now what you going to do? Are you going to do what you saw or are you going to do what I have told you to do in the word? 
This is what God is saying to us. What are we going to do? Are we going to worship him in spirit and truth? Are we going to obey his commandments? Are we going to obey his words? Are we going to practice properly in our gifts and quit trying to act like we some super power or super authority or got something more than our sisters and brothers? Or are we going to humble ourselves under the authority of the almighty God and run our words to a point where we are constantly in his face repenting, staying naked and not ashamed? As we run, regardless if it is a a a a, 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 a look a sprint and a, a, a marathon, a hurdles, a hundred yard dash, two hundred, three hundred, regardless of what it is, we are prepared to do what God has called us to do. That is what God is saying to us, people. That is what's going on in this hour. He's still telling us to be his people. He's still telling us that it's time to do what he called us to do. But now you got to change your garments. You can take off the war gear and now it's time to run. You need to take out all that excess stuff that you had to put on when you were in the trenches to look, prevail in the war because that was the position that you ran. Now God has put you in general. He has put you in a different position in the army and now it's time for you to go forward and give the orders so that the next generation behind you will be ready. What are you going to do now what you going to do now it's time for you to get in a position and let God empower you like never before so we can heal deliver and set free like never before you using God for word but dying until ourselves it is that time now but what are you going to do are you going to do what you complained about those around you doing Oh, they taking God's glory oh they talking this they're trying to sound deep they're trying to look deep are you going to do what they did or are you going to do what you know to do? And that is run this race, striving for the prize. Being aware of your hindrances that may come as you run. But regardless of what it is, we're going to press towards that mark. We're going to push our chest forward. We're going to lean our legs back. And we're going to run with all of our might in this race, in this spiritual race that God has called us unto. That we will complete the perfect will of God and not the perfect will of ourselves. That we will understand that God is our source and the prize. That everything that we can have comes from him and not ourselves and not even from this world. Because every good and perfect thing comes from the Lord. So even the things that he's allowing to come in this world is coming from him. And we got to remember that. And we got to fight. With our prayer, with our fasting, with our studying, our understanding of the word, not just the literal word, but getting to the mysteries, the prophecies, and the way things are supposed to work in God's word kingdom. Because we're spending time in his word, so he's unlocking things that no one has seen or understood. So you can teach the next generation to go deeper than they ever have before. And not just the same word that's been regurgitated a different way. But really get into this and it this this word of infinity. So that all will be changed, all will be healed, all will be delivered. This is Dr. Zoli Shell, where I pray that this, this word, the ultimate race, part one, bless you. I do have a part two coming next week. Stay tuned. And if you're a person that don't believe in God right now, I see the ABCs, acknowledge, believe, and confess, and you are saved, as Romans has told us. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart and you will be saved. Confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, and you will be saved. And I pray that as you pray, the Spirit of the Lord will come and overtake you. In Jesus' name, amen. May this word bless you for those who've seen the word and they're walking in. Let this, may this word bless you and change you in every way. May this word live with you and you meditate and you, and you uh, 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 chew on it. As Joshua said, you meditate, let it come before you constantly that you do what God has ordained you to do. Thank you for joining me and I will catch you guys next week. Be blessed, be blessed, be blessed. And let's run a race like never before. Hey guys, Dr. Zoe Shell Wear here. Thanks for joining me. I pray that you have been fearlessly transformed. Until the next time, be blessed.